Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my YouTube channel Science for Everyone. Today the topic is related to antimicrobial chemotherapy and the title of my today's lecture is the anti-staphylococcal penicillin. In the previous videos, I have discussed the mechanism of the action of the penicillins, the structure of penicillins, and the uh, and the resistance that how bacteria is showing resistance to these penicillins. And uh, I have also discussed the natural penicillins that are the penicillin G and the penicillin V, and how bacteria which bacteria are producing are showing resistance and which type of resistance they are showing. In today's lecture, I will discuss it, uh, the anti-staphylococcus penicillins, okay? Uh, why these penicillins were introduced and how bacteria is showing resistance to it and how they have overcome this resistance, okay? So in today's lecture, I will discuss these such type of stuff, okay? Why it is called anti-staphylococcal penicillins? Uh, because, uh, okay, I will discuss it in the later video. Uh, this is the structure of penicillin. Uh, I have discussed that uh, it consists of two rings. The first is the beta lactam ring and the second is the thiozolidine ring. And the R chain is basically the variable side chain, okay? These, this chain is modified by the microbiologist and the scientist and because of this modification, they uh, they give different variety of activities to the penicillins, okay? So with respect to this R group, the penicillins are divided into five to six groups, okay? The first one was the penicillin G and penicillin V, and the second was the one is the anti-staphylococcal penicillins, okay? Uh, basically, anti-staphylococcal penicillins were introduced by the scientists because the Staphylococcus aureus and the Staphylococcus epidermitis, these bacteria were showing resistance to natural penicillins uh, because uh, they were producing uh, such type of beta lactamase enzymes and they were actively degrading and just destroying the beta lactam ring. As I have told you, that uh, basically this beta lactam ring is the main principal uh, active uh, principal component of the penicillin. This is the area uh, by which the penicillin acts, okay? So this is the main part of the penicillin. When it is destroyed by the beta lactamases that is produced by the microorganisms, so the penicillin cannot work well. Uh, they, they are totally destroyed. So the, and the bacteria are synthesizing beta lactam lactamases. So what does the scientists, the microbiologists do? They modified the R group. Okay, so they placed uh, uh, this such type of R group. Um, uh, this is showing in the uh, in the image. Okay, so it is a bulky group, and what was its function? By placing this bulky group uh, uh, on the R side, what does they do? They uh, they just protect the beta lactam ring. Okay, by placing this big bulky group uh, in the R uh, on the R chain. What happens that uh, due to this bulkiness, the, the beta lactam ring was protected from the beta lactam acids, okay? So then the Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus epidermidis, oh, although they synthesize the beta lactam acids, but they cannot act because uh, now it is protected by this side chain, okay? So it was a very good uh, discovery and good invention, sorry. Uh, and uh, it worked well, but uh, there are drawbacks in this anti-staphylococcus penicillin. Uh, and what are the drawbacks? Uh, the first drawback is that oh, just because of this very bulky group, what happens that the, the penicillin cannot penetrate uh, inside the bacteria, okay? Um, in short, it could not act against the gram-negative bacteria because the the outer uh, the outermost layer of the gram negative bacteria is the uh, the uh, is the phosphobile layer so it cannot penetrate that layer in just a uh, type of cell membrane okay so just because of this bulky group uh, it cannot penetrate the cell membrane of the outer membrane of the gram negative bacteria so the gram negative bacteria were totally uh, resistance to or showing resistance to this uh, uh, anti-staphylococcus penicillin. So in short, 
this penicillin can only act against the Staphylococcus aureus and the Staphylococcus epidermitis. And uh, it is showing a very good uh, efficiency against this, okay? And uh, again, uh, one thing or because uh, uh, mostly the, this penicillin, this anti-staphylococcus or uh, cocal penicillin are less effective than natural penicillin uh, uh, with respect to the streptococci because uh, uh, what is that, that these penicillin active against, uh, these are also not, not active against enterococci because of this bulkiness, okay? This bulkiness. So just because of this bulky group, it cannot penetrate to it. And uh, another thing is the that uh, uh, it can uh, uh, the the group of antibiotic include is the nephcelin, oxycelin, and the diclozacilin. Uh, okay. Also keep this thing in mind uh, because they cannot bind the uh, protein binding pro uh, penicillin binding protein of the MRSA and the MRSE bacteria. And these staphylococcal penicillins are inactive against them. Okay, uh, the penicillin binding proteins. Uh, these penicillin cannot bind to the penicillin binding proteins. Okay, just because of this bulky group, they cannot bind to the penicillin binding proteins. And what are the penicillin binding protein? These proteins are the enzymes that are involved in the biosynthesis of the peptidoglycan layer. So, again, I'm telling you there were two main drawbacks one just because of this bulky group it cannot penetrate the outer membrane of the gram negative bacteria secondly it cannot bind to the penicillin binding protein just because of this bulky group so that's why this bulky group is just uh, giving one importance and that is that it is uh, the uh, it prevents the binding of the beta lactamases to the beta lactam ring and just because of this bulky group so that's why it is. It was giving uh, a good response, but it was also having many drawbacks. Two main drawbacks. So that's why it is not now. It is not that much commercially available now because there are many such type of uh, antibiotic penicillin that can act well against the Staphylococcus aureus and the Staphylococcus epidermidis. But at that time, it was. Uh, efficient okay so uh, just keep this thing uh, in your mind that there is a class of penicillin that is known as there was a class of penicillin that is what that is known as the anti staphylococcus penicillin okay so this was all about it if you have any question you can ask me in the comment box i will answer you there thank you for and for your attention god bless you